Christ. Hey, aloha, everybody, and welcome back to the Think Tech Hawaii studio. This is another episode of Security Matters. I'm Andrew Lanning, your host. Today, Ben Buchko is with me from Buchko Inc., and I want you to strap on your business risk hat. I want you to pay attention. Ben's going to share um, a, a, some deep subject matter expertise on risk management, but business risk management. We've got physical risk management. We've got operational business, man, business risk. We've got cyber business risk. It's going to talk about the programs. It's going to talk about how you can get there. Um, you you can learn a lot today from Ben. So enjoy yourself and enjoy this ride. Ben, thanks so much for taking time to join us today. I know you're a busy guy. Absolutely, Andrew. It's uh, exciting to be here and, and and share. And I have to. I'll try and change my my normal howdy to aloha so that uh, folks can, can get, a, get a better sense. But some, you know, some habits are hard to break. But we'll, uh, we'll, yeah. we'll do the best and share, share, share some, try and share some challenging thoughts as well as some some background information to help folks out. Good, yeah. Howdy works fine. I use that all the time. I've been here thirty something years, and my my howdy just comes out too. So it's all good. Um, so for let's get into so for the audience that, that's not familiar with your work. Um, why don't you just take us back in your experience and, you know, as much as you care to share, kind of kind of bring us what, what got your, um, you know, your passion for risk management and then how, how that's grown into today. Sure, sure. Well, I've, I, I started my career and, and my degrees are in electrical engineering. So uh, went with, didn't get it right the first time, went back for a second degree and then <laughs> started working at Sandia National Laboratories in the, in the nuclear weapons world. And, and we kind of called that the home for the overly educated. So <laughs> and just really bright people, a, a great vision for protecting the nation and uh, with a, a broad spectrum of, of, of efforts. Uh, but that's really in that world is where risk assessment grew and uh, where I learned it. And, and the, the fun piece, which, which got me excited, uh, I started out was not in, uh, I wasn't in the security world at all. And we were designing systems to protect the nation. But uh, I got pulled into a project where we were, we were transporting specialized nuclear cargo across the country and, uh, and, and doing it in, out in the open, uh, if you knew what to look for. But the idea was I was in charge of designing the, the electron, all the electronic security for that system. And the, the cool thing as an engineer was if you're going to design something to, as a protection, then you had to figure out how to break it. And then not only could you break it, but what was practical? Now, everyone can come up, you can always come up with your, wor your absolute worst case dream scenario, aliens come from out of space and, and do things, but, but what's practical? And, and that's where I learned and, and took that from, from the governor, government arena uh, into transportation logistics, where we weren't doing security, but we were trying to, to make sure that the operation supply chain uh, in trucking was, was, it was resilient. Yeah. And then from there led security engineering for, for Exxon Mobil. So we've done risk assessments in every continent except Antarctica. And uh, that's just because I'm not really a cold weather guy. So, so haven't gotten that far south. <laughs> uh, you know, it gets below 60 degrees and I'm wearing the Carhartt. So that's uh, nice. When, when, I moved, it, when I moved to Colorado, that was a real shocker. Uh, so. So we've, we've assessed, and, and really the idea is, there's a lot of security assessments out there and some of the stuff to visit, but what I, what's ingrained for me from the start was not 
how do you break something and break into something or get something out? It's why do you care? What's what's that business reason or operations mission reason that you want to look at risk? So it needs to go beyond just security and start looking at at that full operations resilience. And and that's what gets me excited. Hmm. How often do you think business misses the why? You know, the whole shiny object thing. We see it in cyber a lot where they go buy a new tool and buy another tool and buy another tool, but never really train the people about phishing emails, things like that. Um, business risk is the domain of the C-suite, I would think. You know, it lives with the guys that, that understand loss, and what real loss could be. But risk assessment could be many levels down if it's only done at the security level and the security guys may be not connected to the business position. Um, is that, can you, can you give us a feel for, is that a 90% of the time disconnect? Is it, is it sector specific in your experience? Um, you know, how often is, is the business connected to the risk assessment that's going on? It's, it's not near as often as it needs to be and where it can really make a difference. And so you know, as far as a percentage in, in our business, and when we're talking with folks at the nuts and bolts level, especially in security, whether it be physical security or cyber security or, or safety risk, the experts in that area, they focus on risk in their area. And, and it's stepping away. And you don't actually have to go to the, to the CEO and the, and the C-suite, but you need to be at the, the folks that are the head of operations, whether it be the, the chief operations officer, the director of operations, that's the arena where the glue can come together. But normally the practitioners in their area of expertise that they, you, you stick with what you're comfortable with is, is a common mm. human nature. And, and that's where it makes it, you're trying to battle that and say, I'm, I'm, the, I'm the head of security, but my business and my job and my position is, I'm a security guy, I get paid to do security, so I really need to do a good job at that. Instead of thinking in terms of, I work for this, I, I work for an oil and gas company, so what do I do? I turn na nasty brown stuff into money. How do I do that? I do that by making sure it's protected and only the right things get in and out. Or I'm in the finance industry and what am I doing? My purpose is to maintain the ability to lend money and to, and to bring in and invest money. And, and that's, a, that's not what we get trained as, as tacticians in, in school and our first positions are usually coming in with this is the expertise you're trying to grab. And, and it, takes a, it takes a maturity as well as a different point of view to say, I need to think about the business. And once I tie those two together, you're more effective in your job. And now you can actually assess business risk related to your expertise rather than hoping someone else will make that connection for you. Hmm. Yeah, the, it's... I guess that the the impactful thing to just doing a so person doing their job has like impactful factors. Maybe they can't get to work or a system's offline or something like that. So there's a but for them, it's I think you used a good word there, tactical. And then the bigger, broader impact of that lack of asset use or whatever it might be, um, business has to project some bit of that in its in its business assessment. Our systems are gonna be, I, I don't know if it's like root mean, was it RMS like 70.7% .7 of the time everything works right or something. I don't, I don't know if you can make money at that level or not, but like the, the um, you know, is, is, is business risk uh, a cross domain that, you know, these, these areas of, of operation have got to come together and assess like if, if there's multiple impacts at the same time in different areas, that could be catastrophic, but those two guys have never talked before, you know, from a business perspective. So is it, does it require a holistic sort of 
understanding of the entire operations in order to really be effective? Or do you just end up with a, you know, a, a marginal sort of assessment that's, you know, eh, addresses some of the stuff some of the time? Well, you, you hit on a key piece and, and this is where, okay. where when I learned how to do it, uh, we had team assessments and, and the, okay. the, the challenge, what you want to make sure is that your, your most effective assessments had different perspectives. It was a multidisciplinary team. Okay. And I've been on assessments where, and, and my rule of thumb is the most effective assessments, if you have a team of, of three people or five people or seven or in some cases more, but then you have to, it gets to be really a challenge to manage. But you yeah. want to have less than half the people, security, subject matter experts. Because okay. we all have blinders, we have biases. So I've been on assessments where we had a cultural anthropologist on the team. We were in Africa. Well, we needed to learn Africa. We've had folks that were, they were business operations specialists and attorneys and safety guys and facility management folks. And make sure that, and we would still talk with everybody around, but you want that, you want that perspective that says, if my goal is to make sure my business is resilient, what does my business do? It's got, it's got security experts. It's got, if it's industrial, it's got safety experts, it's got finance folks. Um, you've got whatever you produce, whether it be manufacturing or extraction or deployment. And so you, you want to have folks that will not come and try and solve the problem from exactly the same way. And that's how you bridge from the, the cyber security guys know how to protect their cyber environment and assess it really well. The physical folks need that know how to do the same thing. But the safety people and the operations people, they know their realm. And as long as you're willing to talk in that sometimes rather excitable and animated discussions, because if I'm going to do something that really helps me for security, but it reduces production output by one percent ah. so i save i save a hundred thousand dollars they lose a million every time every day well, <laughs> then the, the security guy is going to lose sure and until Understood. you can and by understanding that you get credibility within the business leaders in the company that say yeah you're not looking out just for you you're looking out for the company and you're willing to learn and that's how that's the fundamental that's a foundation of a of a defendable risk assessment that looks at the operations risk and the mission of the organization you're with. Because if you're not supporting the mission, why you can't? Why are you even there? I see. So sometimes the 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 cost that someone thinks they have, if they don't have visibility on the broader operation, that they they they, they can miss the boat completely. I I get that that it. That, that breadth of, I guess, organizational risk assessment needs to get done. What, when um, we're going to take a break here, but when we get back, we're going to want to. I want to talk about how how much of industry is doing this the right way, um, and and then maybe we can get into s some pointers about what they're doing wrong. But we'll um, we'll pay a few bills, and uh, we'll be back in about one minute with Ben Butchko. Hi, I'm Rusty Kamori, host of Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. I was the head coach for the Punahou Boys varsity tennis team for 22 years, and we were fortunate to win 22 consecutive state championships. My show is based on my book, also titled Beyond the Lines, and it's about leadership, creating a superior culture of excellence, and finding greatness. I feature a wide range of amazing guests who share valuable insights about how going beyond the lines leads to success in everything you do in life. I'm looking forward to you joining me every Monday at 11 a.m. Aloha.
Hey, we're back with Ben Boochko. I wanted to give a shout out to my Vietnam vets behind me. Got the wall on the monitor. So uh, thank you guys so much for your service. Hey, Ben, we're getting into this sort of this sort of workflow or the, the flow of this um, of the of the risk through a business. And um, you you were you were mentioning a bit about the um, the, the the design, the value of the design of, of the risk measurement and things like that. Take us through your your thoughts of what how's it done right? What's it look like when it's packaged up properly um, and and, a, and used properly to to help a business um, you know protect itself and, and potentially save money during a catastrophic problem? Like like we're living as a as a globe right now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, as one one simple example, um, and and really the I think that that's key is the assessments that the that contribute to the mission of the company or the organization that the leaders see as there's a direct connection. So when you're doing your risk assessment, if your risk assessment says Here's all the bad things that we think can happen, and here's how and here's how likely that that's going to occur. That's pretty fundamental in risk assessment. But um, but the key is translating when you define what are the bad things that can happen. That those are defined in terms of what keeps the business running, the organization achieving their mission, and that and then when you have your when you come up with what are the the remediation measures, the safeguards to, to improve the operation, those need to be written and described in terms specifically of what's the value they bring to that mission, not just because it's a good idea. I mean, the good idea may be it's regulated and, and so we need to be in compliance. So good idea means that we don't get a, a penalty, but that's different than what the business wants to see or the organization because they've got there's something that's either for stakeholders the shareholders the owner or the government depending on who you're with there's a reason that organization is there and if you can't do a one-to-one -one correlation of what you're doing that matches that mission you've missed it and i've had this discussion with a guard supervisor at the front end of a chemical plant and when they got it, came back a month later and they said, wow, my job just got so much easier. I, know now, I now know how to prioritize when I make suggestions, when I, when I know what I need to do every day, what I know I need to improve. And so if, if the folks that are really down at where some folks would say, well, they're, they're on the lower end of the salary scale versus the real high thinkers that you pay a ton for, it doesn't matter where you are on that spectrum. That's that insight is valuable. That's awesome. Yeah, the I I I think that that could get overlooked. I mean, I'm I'm a, a well out of my element for risk assessment, other than uh, understanding the value of it. Um, how how are these calculations done? I mean, I've seen um, what's the fair method factor analysis, uh, but but anyway. There's there's a lot of calculation that goes on, and I tend to see spreadsheets and drill downs, and you know it, it it I think it's a lot more complex than can be done um, by walking around and sort of saying that's a five and that's a two and that's a four. I think you sort of end up in the middle of the road more often than you intend to, and and as you mentioned, the priority can't get picked out of the de the data that gets built. Everything's sort of a priority or nothing's a priority, maybe is what happens. How, how, do, how complex does this crunching get? The, well, there's a couple of pieces that feed, feed into that. And one is, if you, do a, if you do an internet search for risk equation, okay. you'll come up with tens of equations. They're all, oh. hard, but they're not all the same and they apply in different with different definitions of the same word. And, okay. and so that causes a problem. And why is that done? A lot of it is because folks want to hit the easy button and it's easy to come <laughs> up and say, wow, I think this is a, you know, I'm going to go with the five point scale. And I'm going to say, that's a one, that's 
that's really bad and five is really good or I'm going to flip it around and I'm going to have this pretty picture of red, yellow, green, blue. And, and I'm going to call it a calculation that most risk assessments, they'll pick, they'll pick a, uh, they'll pick a risk equation. And usually it's there. It, the simplest one is, you know, risk equals what is the, the impact of loss times the probability of loss. So what's my consequence okay. times my probability? And you multiply that together. Well, if I multiply a five, and that five can be anything from, that's really, really bad. That's the definition. Five is really, really bad, and one is really, really good. Well, if I multiply really, really bad times it happens a whole lot, what's my answer? It's, it's really meaningless. Okay. Because there's no context around it. I can't, I'm trying to pretend like I have a, a rating and I'm treating it like it's a hard number that I can do math with. Uh, well, you can, you can use those ratings very well to organize your information, but the calculations need to be made with, with more precise information. And, and, and you get a lot of pushback saying, well, I really don't know how often this is going to happen. The, the challenge is there are ways that you can say, here's my probability that I think when I flip a coin, I think that it's going to be head, heads 50% of the time. And I have a confidence factor in, my, in that rating that I say okay. 50% of the time it's going to be a heads and I'm 100% confident that that's what it's going to be because there's only two sides of the coin. I can also say, I think it's going to be heads because I, for whatever reason, I say it's going to be heads 75% uh, 75 probability, but my confidence level is a lot lower. If okay. you come across with, with that, and, and you can train people to do this, it doesn't take long to train people to think that way, and they get calibrated, and now I can actually, I can make my calculations with real numbers, and I can present them in my one to five scale ranking rating so that it makes it easier to put on a chart. And I got real numbers behind it that are statistically defendable. And I've taken away some of the human nature, which we've seen wow. in practice and we've seen in study that says, one, if you're gonna if you're gonna rate something from one to five, oh on average folks are gonna get they're gonna get tired of 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 where the ratings are, and you're going to get a lot more of twos, threes, and fours, because I'm not going to take that personal, well, I'm really not sure if it's a four or five, but if I put a five down there, it's going to make it look really bad or really good, and I'm not sure. So everything converges to the middle. And so the bigger the scope of your assessment, the more everything looks just the same, and, and that's the recipe for why the the organizational executives don't look, it, it, it diminishes the integrity of the assessment because it stresses mediocrity. And so why should I worry about making my business decisions on a mediocre result that statistically everything comes out in the middle unless it's the, oh my goodness, terrible, 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 terrible scenario that I came up with that Everybody knows that's the really bad one. So why did I spend a whole bunch of my internal resources and external resources for you to, to tell me exactly what I know with a mediocre basis of rationale? So mm. it, that's, the, that's the inherent problem. And, and that's okay. what's been our company challenge. And, and we, we actually patented our process that says what everyone's been doing, but putting their own name on it and calling it something different. We went down to the math level and said, this is the defendable equation. This is the defendable model that fits for your industry, your area. And if you have improvements to the model, we can apply that into the model. You're not living with it, but everything and the whole key is we test that model and give it feedback. So it's a closed okay. loop. So you say, I think the world is going to end tomorrow. Well, tomorrow night, you test your hypothesis. Did it end? Well, hopefully not. Yeah. But effectively, that's how you make sure your model is 
is real and it's not just I hired Ben Butchko because he's got a I really think he's got a good opinion and and last year I hired Andrew on a different area because he's got a really great opinion and he gave me all kinds of great charts and everything but okay they're pretty but I just paid for your I paid for your opinion which is great but if I have a whole company to do I need to have everyone produce the same results because I'm not going to get Andrew Landing at every single site every single day, and he's not always on top of his game. Some days he's more tired than others. Then Butch go the same way. So you, that's where the math comes in, and you have you have your tools embed the math so that the people using it think about what's important to their business. That's that's how you get success. Awesome. So the I like I like the idea of taking the or at least having correctable human behavior because anything like that that's being done by people is gonna have that variability of their experience day to day. They're they're gonna miss things or they're gonna feel differently about that that thing today than they did yesterday and grade it differently when it was the same thing, right? That's gonna happen with human beings. So that's that's very interesting to use math to correct them. Hey, we've got about a couple, about two minutes, minute and a half left. Um, what's the one takeaway you would give business owners um, if they want to engage in, in, a, in a risk man, risk assessment, what, what's the one uh, caution or, or point or two you'd give them to make sure that's effective for them when at the outcome, you know, when, when they're done? The, the quick piece, and it's like most projects, start with what is defined success. What is it you're trying to, what's going to make that successful at the end? Define what you mean by risk assessment. Be clear that you want more than one perspective involved in that assessment so that I can get that broader scale. And if I want to know, I want to know just how my network is, is going to be impacted and say, I want to specifically give me all the details on my network. If I want to answer the question of, is my manufacturing plant going to meet its targets this year and, and, and address supply chain and, and production and labor, Make sure you got those people engaged and set the rules up front. Make sure everyone's using the same, the same measurement tools and the same definitions for all the words they're, set, they're coming through. And then the rest are in the details and we can teach people how to do the details so they can do it on their own. But that's, that's generic where everybody can help themselves. That's awesome. There you go, folks. There's a tip from Ben and Ben, uh, when your product launches, I want to get you back on here to walk us through the, through some of the under the hood stuff if you get a chance, sir. I really appreciate you joining me today. Thank you very Absolutely. much. Hey, Thank be you. safe out there, everybody. Aloha. Take care of yourself. Stay sheltered. Uh, we're going to get through this uh, crisis and um, hopefully um, we get back to having our country growing again. Aloha and take care.